I have used two audio effects so far, normalize and noise reduction. I will now show a third effect called EQ or equalization. It is an interesting effect and can make or break the audio. When applied properly, EQ improves the listening experience to a significant level. EQ is the process of manipulating audio by frequencies. If that sounds complicated, don't worry. It is not as complicated to use as it sounds. You will understand after watching this video. However, finding the proper EQ is not very easy. There are some basic steps and then advanced tricks. I will cover the basics first, and then we'll talk about the advanced tricks. The waveform you see on the screen is already normalized and noise reduced. To add EQ effect to it, select everything and go to the effects menu. Inside EQ and filters, you will find several effects. They all offer a particular type of EQ, but we will only focus on filter curve EQ. Filter curve EQ is the most flexible. With filter curve EQ, you can do any kind of EQ tasks. You can see an EQ drawing on my screen. I previously applied this EQ to a recording. For this tutorial, we will not use a complex EQ like this. Instead, we will see some basic EQ. I will reset the line from the flatten button. We now have a green straight line at 0 dB. At the bottom, you can see the frequency range. You have to learn some basics about frequency to use EQ well. Otherwise, it will always be shooting in the dark. In the x-axis, the frequency starts at 20 Hz and ends at 20 kHz. It is the frequency range of human hearing. If a sound has a frequency lower than 20 Hz or higher than 20 kHz, a human being will not hear that sound. Dogs or bats can hear higher frequency sounds that humans cannot hear. What is frequency, actually? Frequency is the number of vibrations per second of the sound source. If something vibrates once per second, we say the frequency is 1 Hz. If it vibrates 100 times per second, the frequency is 100 Hz. We hear sound from a guitar because the guitar's string vibrates. A guitar string does not generate only one particular frequency through this vibration. It generates many different frequencies at the same time. When we talk, our vocal cord also vibrates and generates sound. So while we speak, we create a combination of different frequencies. How this combination of frequencies is formed is a bit advanced topic. We will learn as much as we need to draw a graph here. Let's see how the combination of frequencies looks like. Audacity has an analyzer called Plot Spectrum. You can select a portion of the audio and check how the frequency energy is distributed. The frequency is on the x-axis, and on the y-axis, you see the energy of that frequency. It is not super important to understand this graph fully. I want you to get enough idea of how frequency energy is distributed. For my selected portion of the audio, 200 Hz has the most energy. Every frequency does not hold the same amount of energy. After 7 kHz, you can see a significant drop in the energy. There is no energy close to 20 kHz for my selected part of the audio. The energy distribution varies from sound to sound. If I select another portion of the audio or a different portion, you will see a different graph. I will select a different portion of the audio and check the frequency analysis. You can see a different looking graph now. All these discussions mean that different sounds spread over different frequencies with different levels of energy. But why are we learning this? Because EQ is the process of manipulating volumes by frequency. Those who understand what this line means become better with the EQ effect. Back to the filter curve EQ configuration window. So I was saying EQ is the process of manipulating volume by frequencies. If I take the green line above 0 dB, I am increasing the volume, which means a boost. If I take the green line below 0 dB, I am decreasing the volume, which means a cut. But dragging the whole line means the same increase or decrease across all the frequencies. We do not use EQ to affect all the frequencies by the same amount. We use EQ to boost or cut only specific frequencies. Manipulating specific frequencies can result in better sound. That brings up another question, how do we know which frequencies to target? Well, there are some general guidelines about EQ. Audacity has some factory presets of EQ. You can study those to have some idea which frequency results in what type of sound. You do not have to be an expert on this, but a general idea helps. Let's explore how the AM radio manipulates frequency. You can see it cuts a frequency before 60 Hz and after 4 kHz. The rest of the line is on 0 dB meaning those frequencies are as it is. You can preview how your audio will sound with this EQ without applying it. Use the preview button to get a 6 second preview. Audacity is a free audio recording and editing software and I recommend. The difference in tone was not too significant. Let's check another preset where the difference is quite noticeable. I will use the telephone EQ. 
It is cutting off from 300 hertz and will make a big difference. Audacity is a free audio recording and editing software, and I recommend. You could hear how the frequency manipulation alters the voice. Your goal would be to find an EQ that best suits your voice. Every voice is different, and the best EQ for each voice is different. There are factors like the microphone or recording environment that also play a vital role in EQ. However, we will see a simple EQ that applies to almost every recording. For every voice recording, you can use a low roll-off for speech. There is a concept called fundamental frequency. It is the lowest frequency generated from a sound source. The fundamental frequency of the human voice is generally 80 Hz for males. For females, it is a bit higher like 165 Hz or more. For children, it is even more. All this means there is no frequency below the fundamental frequency. If you start the low roll-off for speech graph, it started rolling off from 100 Hz. I can drag the dots to roll off from 80 Hz. That will cut off energy below 80 Hz where no human voice energy exists. Sometimes, low frequency noises exist below 80 Hz. This cutoff will help to reduce those types of noise in the recording. This graph can be manipulated by clicking on a place and dragging. If you click on the line, a dot will be created. You can drag up and down the line to boost or cut a frequency. Practice this dragging a bit if you want to build advanced level EQ on your own. Let's add some EQ on the recording to improve the audio listening experience. I will bring up the low roll-off for speech preset again. As I was saying, the fundamental frequency can be as low as 80 Hz, so I will add roll-off below 80 Hz. If we listen to this, you may not notice any difference. But behind the scenes, it will reduce low frequency noises. Audacity is a free audio recording and editing software, and I recommend. I will apply this EQ. This is the most basic EQ we should apply to any voice recording. I will add another EQ to make the listening experience better. I will go to Filter Curve EQ again and select a new preset from the factory preset. It is the treble boost. Treble boost boosts the higher frequencies on the recording. You can see in the graph that it is boosted after 4 kHz. It has been boosted by 9 dB. A 9 dB boost is considered quite a big boost. That much boost can alter the audio in a bad way, so you should limit your boost to 6 dB. I will drag the line to 6 dB. The actual EQ process is a bit more complicated than that, but for simplicity we will follow this. It will give quite a good listening experience. Audacity is a free audio recording and editing software, and I recommend... The audio has become crispier and bright. I will apply this EQ. The two EQs I have applied can be combined into one EQ. I am skipping those details in this video, but if you want to learn more, I suggest you take my Audacity courses. I also offer customized EQ based on your voice recording. That means, the EQ and processing I provide will be the perfect fit for your voice and recording. I will put links in the description. For faster and more efficient audio editing, I recommend getting a personalized EQ and processing macro. The Audacity bundle offers all these things at a lower price. Taking the bundle will save you some money, and you will get all the necessary things in one place.